Hey all, my name is Taylor, and today I'm going to be going over all the options available to upgrading your ally's storage. Whether you own an ally already and are looking to make upgrades, or you don't own an ally and you want to consider all the options available to you before making a purchase. Which, if that's you, I applaud you because that is what you should be doing for making smart purchasing decisions. I'm going to cover all the storage upgrades available in this video, so let's get started. Before that though, I want to let you know that this video is not sponsored and any links in the description are not affiliate links. The Ally with the Z1 Extreme comes with a 512 Gen 4 2230 sized NVMe drive which is pretty fast with read speeds of about 4300 megabytes per second and write speeds of about 1800 megabytes per second. These are speeds that are going to deliver excellent performance in games and in anything you want to do on your Ally in general. However, with the performance that the Ally offers, you're probably going to want to download a lot of games and that 512 of gigabytes is only going to get you so far before you start filling it up. It's fine for smaller games, but once you start downloading AAA titles, that storage is going to get eaten up quickly. So what do you do when you want more storage? Well, you have a few options available at your disposal. The first option is using a microSD card to store your games. The Ally has a microSD card reader at the top that supports up to UHS-2 cards, which will typically be V90 class cards at the high end of performance. You can get anywhere from 64 gigabytes to a terabyte of extra storage by going the microSD route. Those V90 cards are gonna deliver good performance, but at a cost. Currently, these cards are very expensive and not a great value when it comes to storage per performance. A typical UHS-2 V90 card that's about 128 gigabytes will run at speeds of about 300 megabytes per second read and 250 megabytes per second write for about 120 USD. This isn't a great price to performance to storage ratio. You can use cheaper UHS-1 cards that will deliver significantly more storage for less money at the expense of speed. Some of the fastest UHS-1 cards will hit around 98 megabytes per second read and 62 megabytes per second write, which is fine for smaller games, but AAA titles will take a long time to load on these drives. Whichever microSD card you choose to use, the process of installing it in the Ally is super easy. Just stick the drive in and you're ready to start writing to it like you would any other hard drive. One thing to be aware of is that there is currently a bug in the Ally that causes some SD cards to fail due to overheating. And it's an issue that ASUS is still attempting to diagnose but hasn't resolved as of the time of this video. Another option is to plug an external drive into your Ally via the USB-C port at the top. This is going to get you more speed and more storage. Speeds of external SSD drives typically fall around 500 megabytes per second for read and write speeds, and storage ranges from anywhere from 512 gigabytes to eight terabytes. However, this does mean that you will need to use the one USB-C port on the Ally, which leaves you with no remaining ports to charge the Ally. A couple of things you can do to get around this is either plug your drive into the USB-A port on your Ally's charger dock if you have one, or plug your drive into a hub like this Anchor one. Finally, there's my personal favorite option, which is to install a new NVMe drive into the Ally, replacing the internal 512 gigabyte drive completely. This does mean that you'll need to reinstall all your games and apps as it's a fresh install of Windows. Going this route involves the most work and some technical know-how, but the results are the best in my opinion. To do this, you'll need a 2230 sized NVMe drive to replace the Allies drive. The Sabrent drive seemed to be the most popular option. Personally, I have a two terabyte Sabrent drive installed in my Ally, which you can find for between 250 and 300 USD. My two terabyte drive is getting around 5,100 megabytes per second read and 1,700 megabytes per second write. You'll also need a double zero Phillips head screwdriver bit, which you can find in an iFixit kit. Some guitar picks or pry tools might be needed for making the process of taking the backplate off easier. You'll also need an internet connection for when you need to download the OS back onto the new drive you install. With all these things, you're now ready to install the new drive. First, you'll want to ensure that you have the latest BIOS update. At the time of this video, that BIOS version is V323. 
Some earlier versions of the Allies BIOS have a bug which causes the recovery process to hang, so don't skip this important step. After the BIOS is updated, power off your Ally completely, making sure that it's not connected to any power source. Then flip the Ally over, removing five long screws along the edges. There's one screw remaining at the bottom center that is smaller and it's attached to the Ally's backplate. So unscrew it just enough to take the backplate off, but don't unscrew it from the backplate. Now take your pry tool and work around the edges starting at the bottom of the Ally. You can use your fingers too if you choose. The back plate will give you a little resistance, but there's no ribbon cables attached to the back plate that you can accidentally rip out. So just keep separating the back plate from the ally. Once it's off, set it to the side and unplug the battery cable that's attached at the center here. Now you can find the NVMe drive located under this flap and you can unscrew the NVMe and remove it. Place the new one in, screw it down and reattach the battery cable. Close the Ally up and screw the back plate back on. Something to note is that opening the Ally and replacing the NVMe drive doesn't void your warranty, and it doesn't compromise the structural integrity of your Ally either. Plug your Ally in and turn it on, holding down the volume down button until you get into the BIOS. Enter the advanced view of the BIOS and navigate to the advanced tab, and the first option you'll see is the ASUS Cloud Recovery. Click this and follow the prompts to connect the Ally to your network. In V323, I did experience a bug where I connected to my Wi-Fi and it said it couldn't connect. I restarted and re-entered the cloud recovery following the prompts and then it recognized my Wi-Fi connection. I'm not saying that's what you'll experience, but it's something to be aware of that I experienced. The download and install will take a bit, so just be patient. Once that's installed, you'll be at the Windows Setup screen, which you can follow the prompts there to set up your device. Once that's done, you'll be in Windows, and from there, you'll need to download driver updates and Windows updates. This is a fresh install of Windows, so be prepared to re-download all your apps and games. Finally, enjoy all that sweet, sweet new space. Installing your new NVMe drive into your Ally is going to give you the best experience because now you can still take your Ally anywhere while utilizing more storage at full speeds while also taking advantage of the micro SD card slot or external drives if you like. I hope this guide was helpful. Leave a like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.